Hi guys, this is Chris of Wilson Wildlife Sculpture and Wood Carving. Thanks a lot for subscribing to my YouTube channel. Um, I'm really excited about these sculptures and uh, in this video um, I'm creating a lot of new work in 2024, getting ready for shows. And this is a continuation of my last video in which I showed how um, I described uh, how I defy gravity with my sculptures and gave some tricks and techniques. So I made a lot of progress in this video um, and these work since the last video because I, I did that outdoors. I originally had a white base to uh, this sculpture here, which I've now painted bronze and with gold highlights. Um, so I'm going to talk about some recent work and uh, this is my favorite part of the sculpting process. The final touches, the color schemes, the composition, how I defy gravity with my work. So I hope you gain value in this, in this video um, and gain some tips. And if you do feel like you gain value, please subscribe to my channel um, and also give me tips how I can improve um, uh, my uh, videos. So thanks a lot for your support. Um, so the last video, I was not happy because um, the hummingbirds weren't, weren't going in place exactly right. The composition, I hated this base, which was white. I try to do something more distressed, more postmodern. This is a very modern, formal base. And the other base is a piece of redwood I finished um, in, the, uh, in the video. Um, it has nice figure grain. And so each composition is a little bit different. They're each one of a kind, original. It's a ruby-throated hummingbird flying on foxglove. I've done white foxglove in the past, never violet, but I embellished the foxglove with some details. I actually added a little gold highlights in the uh, in some of the green because I, I and the hummingbirds too. It's important to get a little flair with your work, some iridescence and, and flair. Uh, I take artistic liberties, um, although you can see this in nature, especially with the iridescence of hummingbirds. They're so beautiful. So. Um, one of the things I worked on was just making the holes smaller. Rather than use a drill bit, I used a diamond flame bit, and I was able to get a really tight fit, and therefore the hummingbirds can now be just moved, can be just taken out. I'll show you in a second. Uh, I'll show you some details. Uh, nothing is, is holding them in place, no glue or anything. It's just they're defying gravity because I have a tight fit. And so they'll both come apart, I explained how I, I made the foxglove, the metal armature, and how they go in the bases in my uh, video, which I uh, did outside when I was finishing this redwood base. Uh, but I, the foxglove is much farther along. I think these are getting close to being finished. I may add some gold leaf to this base. I added gold paint highlights. This is all wood. Oh, and also um, I found something very interesting because I had this, this base lying around my shop, and I really liked the form of it. I had it lying around my shop for about 15 years, and now I remember what I used it for. So I created a monument over seven feet tall in bronze. I was commissioned by Kennesaw State University in 2007, 2008. It was right around the time I, I went on sabbatical from teaching, and actually never, never came back because Sculpting full-time is, is much more fun, and uh, I enjoy teaching, don't get me wrong. That's why I'm doing these videos, and why I give lessons to uh, students who are interested in really improving. Um, I can do apprenticeships and one-on-one -on -one teaching, and, and really improve your work. You can visit my website, wilsonlivesculpture.com, and learn about that. But anyway, I was commissioned um, by the university to create a monument of a large owl and I'm going to show you that because I'm actually working on a, an owl, a great horned owl, uh, in here in a minute here. But I made, I sculpted it a bronze. But to win that commission, I made this base, and I made the the bird in in, in wood. I don't like holding the birds with my hands. I like to use like a little um, um, plastic here so the oil doesn't get on my the sheen of the uh, the birds. Um, so hopefully you can see that. Try to come over here a little bit, a little bit better. So this owl actually went on this base here. Okay, so um, 
I'll take this apart for a second here. Again, I don't like to uh, hold the birds with uh, my bare hands because the oil can affect the sheen, so I'm very, very careful. So here's an example of how I just got a tight fit and how it came off. So there's a metal pen, stainless steel, that, go, that um, just goes right into a hole there. Actually, I made lots of holes because I'm gonna do the details of the flowers, um, lots of detail. But I'm just showing you how this came apart for a second so I can show you this owl because I'm also excited about a new composition for it. So that's how the foxglove came apart. I showed you how last video how I do the uh, square tubing to defy gravity. And working with wood, it's just a lot easier using metal to defy gravity. That's why bronze sculptures, metal sculptures, you can get a lot of um, um, heavy things in space just by uh, welding. Now this is just silver solder because this is a lightweight metal. Um, but the original piece was bronze, but before I show you that, I made a wood um, maquette, okay, of this owl perched right on here. There's some details of the piece here. And again, this helped win me the commission. What I actually did was I made a rubber mold of this, a silicon rubber mold. Uh, I was taught how to do this in grad school. There's the base. I made a separate mold of the base. It's all wood. Okay, but I have, first you seal the wood. Uh, it's a two-part rubber mold. And after the mold, I made my own um, the silicon rubber. I invested it in a, um, I'm going to show you the owl here. I messed it in a mother mold, and I poured wax in that mold. This is called the lost wax process of casting. And so um, I made this bronze sculpture using the lost wax method of casting. This was a model for my uh, monument, which I won um, and uh, created in 2008 for Kennesaw State University. Um, this is um, about uh, not even a quarter inch thick, so it's hollow. Okay, the lost wax process is a little bit different uh, process where you, yeah, you pour the uh, wax into the mold and then you, um, and then you demold, demold it. I think I have some still molds of this, um, but yeah, I cast this in wax in three different parts, the branch, the bird, the base and then it was welded together at a foundry. I didn't do this part, but I did my own molds. I did my own patina. That's the chemicals I use to give the sheen. Try to show you some different views. I really like this view here. So anyway, I forgot that I made this owl. It looks a little bit larger. That's probably because the rubber molds, they shrink a little bit. And when you do cast your work, the, um, um, the mold, the metal will be uh, smaller. But I made this larger than life. This is a great horned owl, and if you all know um, great horned owls, they're huge. So I made it, um, I made it a larger than life size because it was outside. So let me show you some details of this piece before I show you some other work. And there's the bronze base. Okay, that's with a patina. Uh, I actually have sold this um, um, maquette a number of times. It's in collections across the country as well as Canada uh, but I only made one monument and the, the um, usually my additions are very very um, um, small so I'm not sure if you can see the very detail on this bronze but back to back to woodworking because um, that's the focus uh, mainly in most of my work um, again I created this category uh, uh, or my, my my YouTube page, I created a, the page about uh, first wood carving, but really I realized looking at other pages, I'm a sculptor and my background's in sculpture. So this is important for me to, um, to talk about the differences. I just have a new video I posted about uh, what's the difference between art and craft as well as uh, wood carving and sculpture. And there are differences. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about those. There are also very, a lot of similarities. I'm going to talk about that again in another um, video, but I want your feedback as well. I try to show a lot of emotion and life and different concepts with my sculptures. 
to me, it elevates it to fine art. It's not just about the craftsmanship and the detail. So I would like your thoughts and try to engage the audience because, you know, I, I want to know if, if you're interested in this art form, uh, whether you collect or you carve or you sculpt in clay. Traditionally, a lot of artists, that's what they did. This is how I, I made the, the large, the monumental version. I sculpted it in clay. Although, in this day and age, <laughs> it's amazing what uh, uh, computers can do. Um, CAD design will, uh, they have machines that will enlarge a model and duplicate it. I mean, it's, it's, the, world's, the world's changing. And I had this technology all the way back in 2008, but as a carver, I carved this out of foam um, outside my house because it was too big to get inside my house. And, and then I made, uh, put clay over the foam. So the foam was armature. I, have, I had a welded um, metal for the branch and to support everything underneath. And then I put the clay on top. And then I, I made it in different se sections so I, so I could uh, make the mold and take it apart. So it's easy to defy gravity in metal sculptures because you can weld and metal strong. Wood's a little bit more challenging, okay? So this is all metal, but I like to paint my work because I show realism. And, and then I put, I insert wood. Now when I design the, um, um, the owl monument, it's called Midnight Watch, I had to hire an engineer to look at um, the sculpture and if it would be strong for you know many years. And um, obviously, bronze sculptures have been around since the Renaissance and before um, many many centuries. But it had to support a, a student who weighed 250 pounds and could hang from the branch. And uh, the engineer looked at it and said, mm -mm, "You know, that's." It's a little more precarious, so why don't you add a branch to the back of the head of the owl? And I had to do that. I had to add an extra branch, change my design, and it still looked very good. It just kind of brushing the back of the, uh, uh, the branch, if you can see that there. Um, but it, it, it gained support. But I learned some things from, from hiring this, this engineering firm. Um, I had to... I, I, I learned about, um, about, yes, about structure, he was a structure engineer, and uh, I had a big uh, black granite base, which I, uh, I rolled off a big trailer like the Egyptians did with pipe. And so I rolled it down the campus green. I hired, uh, two students actually helped me, and my father was, was the best. He, he's helped me so much over the years. He came and helped me. This was back in 2008. Uh, so the engineer, um, you know, helped me, um, with um, the strength of the sculpture, making sure it would, it would test the, the, the uh, time and that it would be strong. So I had to drill holes through the granite base and I had to, uh, this is even heavy, I had to, this it was over 250 pounds of weight, just the sculpture alone. I had to um, have two metal pins welded stainless steel rods that were threaded and insert that into the granite base. And I had the holes um, about pretty much one inch stainless steel uh, threaded uh, metal. And that held the whole sculpture in place, two, two rods. And he, he showed me industrial strength epoxy, um, which I used. But I use epoxy to this day in wood all the time. Okay, so what you really wanna have is um, metal going into a hole like in this sculpture here, if I were to glue this in place, this comes out too, okay? You're gonna to wanna to have an epoxy, but you want that hole to be tight. So in my last video, when I demonstrated outside how to defy gravity, the uh, holes were really too, um, too big. So if you have a tight hole, not only will it hold in place, that epoxy likes to kind of adhere better and your works will be stronger. So that's a little bit of information about the monument. Here is the um, uh, Hungerbird Defying Gravity. Let's see, I've got to put it back into its uh, little small hole, very small, I can barely see. I'm going to show you it now. And I'll take this apart.
So here is the, uh, the piece with the redwood base. Okay. I really like this base. It has figure grain. I'm going to move the, um, uh, the table so you can see it from all different directions. Let me, let me set the other one back up and show you how I did that once again. So you can see that you know this was the painted base. I had it white before, but now I painted it bronze and, and gold over that. But um, I'm gonna put this back. So this is a nice thing about defying gravity with your work. Um, you're able to uh, make sculptures so they can also come apart. And that's very important if you wanna ship your work Nowadays, it's even more challenging. I've learned ship work because the, the handlers are just so uh, so rough on pieces. Um, and I've got videos how how to do that, how to clean your works, how to ship works. And this is a very popular series. These uh, um, these hummingbirds. Let me move this chair here so you can see. On our uninterrupted. And step back a little bit here, and try to get some close-ups of the hummingbirds, how I defied gravity. Obviously, I didn't move the chair far enough. But um, I've got two different color foxglove. This was an experiment. Um, one's more violet colored, one's more fuchsia colored, warmer. And if you notice, I added some gold highlights, not just to the hummingbirds, but to the green. I see yellow and green, but I just added some pizzazz. But take a look at this redwood base. Let's see if that comes up in the, the light here. It's got some really nice figured grain. I'm going to turn around this way so you can see that how it dazzles in the light, just like the hummingbird dazzles with its iridescence. Okay, see I carved ripples on it? It just has this undulating kind of rhythm, and that's something I want to create in my sculptures repetition and rhythm and compositional movement back up to the hummingbird there they are so i could display them together i'm not quite sure about that but um, i think they came out pretty well let me know um, what your thoughts are and um, and how also i can help you improve um, your work or you can just admire um, uh, my work and uh, hopefully um, um, learn from me and uh, I really appreciate your support. Thanks a lot for following me.